Hello and welcome to this live stream. Whether you're watching now or whether you're watching later on catch up, catching it later on video, welcome. It's good to be with you. I'm in a different place to normal and I'm excited tonight to look at the issue of our hearts with you tonight. So the title of this time is um, about the heart. It's about letting Christ dwell in your hearts. And I'm taking that from a passage in Ephesians. But I wanted to look at this topic because it's crucial if we understand that our hearts are the bridge between our spirits and our souls. If we want to drink from the goodness of God flowing from his Holy Spirit into our spirit, it has to come through our hearts into our soul. We can have all sorts of knowledge, all sorts of biblical understanding, all sorts of cleverness, all sorts of ideas about God, but without the life river flow that comes from him through your heart into your being, it's not life. It's not going to satisfy you and cause you to live an abundant life. If we look uh, briefly at the passage I'm talking about, which is in Ephesians chapter 3, uh, verse 14 onwards, but I'll pick from verse 16, it says this, uh, Paul's praying for the Ephesians and he says, I ask that he would give you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And then he goes on to talk about this causing you to be rooted and founded in his love and prepares you for an ongoing experience of the height, width, breadth, depth of God's love because Christ is now flowing and dwelling in your heart. Now when we talk about love, when it's mentioned in the scriptures, when Paul is talking about it, he, he means really hesed love, the Hebrew word hesed. It's not a Hollywood love, it's not a mushy love, it's a covenant committed love. And God's desire is that you flow in that knowledge that you're loved by him, you're in covenant connection with him, and that his provision is constantly coming to you. And for that to happen, you need your heart strengthened. You need the pathways in your heart strengthened and formed so that you're constantly accessing that hesed love Whatever situation you find yourself in, not just prayer, but in everyday life, in conflict situations, in situations where you're needing God to break through, or you're just talking with people and you need to express God's love, then the strengthening of your heart, the opening of your channels of your heart, so this can flow, is essential. And I wanted to look practically tonight how we can increase that. We have to guard our heart. We have to be aware of our heart. So becoming sensitive to when your heart has tightened or closed, when you're in offense towards someone or you're uh, struggling with fear or anxiety over something because you feel you're losing something, we need to notice those. And so increasing that sensitivity means asking, Holy Spirit, would you make me sensitive to the times when my heart is becoming closed off to that flow? That's the first thing. Before you can do anything about this, we need to be sensitive and aware to when it's closing off. I mean, we can even, as I say this, let's not make this mere information right now in our hearts. Let's soften our hearts and become aware of his flow. Become aware of where, maybe where we've tightened our hearts in the day through interactions. We're holding judgments, fears, and we want to let them go. And as we learned in some of the other teaching I've brought, one of the 
key ways to start to let that go and clear your heart is to exhale, is to breathe it out. So I'm aware there's something there and I exhale it out. I let the fear go. I start to allow rest to come into that situation. I don't deny it's there in my heart. I look at it. I face it. I feel it in my body. And I breathe it out and relax. That's if at the core of what I would call repentance. That is the beginning of changing your inner being and inner movements to be in line with how God sees things and how God moves. So we start to do that. When we create that uh, place of peace and rest, it enables us to move on to a deeper step. Now, Paul prays that we will be strengthened. And the Greek words he used are kratos and dunamis. These are powerful Greek words. He's saying that kratos, the creative energy of God, would operate in your heart, and the dunamis, the kinetic energy, the dynamic energy of God, would operate in your heart. So there's, there's a forming going on, and it's a movement that goes on. You see, the symbols and images that God uses, uh, that the Bible uses for the Holy Spirit, is, is not just one of a lake, but it's rivers, it's movement, it's flows, and you're going to increasingly know the channel in your heart is open when there's a sense of flow. So you become sensitive to that. And you're leaning into God. This is what Paul is praying. So I'm leaning into God for the Holy Spirit to strengthen those pathways, those channels in my heart so it flows. I need strength. Now that's not just going to happen to you like I've prayed I need that strength oh I've got it that's it I can go I've got it it's going to be a cooperation it's a dance between you and the spirit where you pray for that strength and then you start to form the patterns in your heart to do it you repeat processes that soften your heart so if we're if we're learning to trust, let's say the issue for you is finances and being anxious about finances and you're worried that you don't have enough, you access that anxiety, you breathe it out and then you breathe in the hesed trust of God that he loves you and he's looking after you. You might even use scripture at this point to enforce that channel like, you supply all my needs according to your riches in glory. You're not beating yourself up with the truth. You're not telling yourself off. You are breathing out the old channel of anxiety and breathing in the channel, if you like, of you provide. Now this is over-rational. It's trans-rational. It's not something that you can calculate. Your, your mind will be going, how is he providing? And we're not answering that question at this point to form this channel. We're acknowledging it's there. We're leaning into it and just telling the questions in our mind for this time to just speak to the hand and be quiet. I'm breathing out I don't need to worry about money. I don't want to worry about money. Breathe in that you are meeting all my needs. You have provided everything I need for life and godliness. You see, your mind and the anxiety will want you to look outside, look at the, what's happening in the visible realm around you, and whether that confirms that truth. You're learning with your heart to look inward to the flow of provision that isn't a rational calculation based on what's outside, but is an internal access to this river of abundance and flow. This river and abundance can miraculously create 
provision for you. But even in that, you're not looking for that to outside circumstances to confirm that. I'm, I'm actually focused on creating the channel within my heart that flows with rest, to, that's being recreated in place of the anxious flow. So I let go of anxiety. I breathe in that you provide for me. So it's, it's a, a process you're doing f at first for its own sake. You're not trying to get results. This is not a prayer to say, Lord, give me the thousand pounds I need tomorrow. This is first of all creating the channel in your heart because then if the channel is open or increasingly more widely open through this, then Paul is saying that the Hesed love of God starts to expand within you. And that's the, that's the force of his prayer. It's not a static prayer. It's a force prayer. It's a, it's a, a height, width, breadth, depth of his love. You can feel the outward expansion of it, which he then says fills you with the fullness of God. You can feel the expansion of it. It's like the you inside is getting bigger and bigger. And if you like overwhelming coming outside your body and overwhelming the circumstances because you're more absorbed with the inner man at this point that Paul talks about, the insides, the inward flow, the open channels in your heart, and you're drinking and losing yourself in that for this moment. I mean, let's, I know I'm talking, but let's do that even as I'm talking. Let's allow the channel of God's provision for us, whatever it is, whatever provision you need in your life. He gives you everything you need for life and godliness. Accept that, breathe out anxiety, breathe in the provision and let your inner being expand outwards with the grip of Jesus' love around you that pulls you outwards. The Spirit of Christ meeting all your needs, resourcing you. Feel that flow. Feel it now. <laughs> I'm creating a pathway. I'm strengthening a pathway. This means that as the pathway is deepened within my life, it affects the way I live. It affects the way I behave when I come out of this state. I more and more have a natural or an instinctive response of trust. As you do this, specific things that are blocking in your life might come up. And these often come as a distraction, like you're focusing and, and allowing your heart to expand and a distraction comes to you. Take note of your distractions because they're often the things that you idolize, that affect you, that have got a hook in your life. And you take that distraction that idol and notice it and go, look at that, wants to drag me. It wants to drag me, for instance, <laughs> onto Instagram to see how many people have liked my post because I draw on the, the value, the fact that people like what I do and I'm, I'm concerned with what people think about me. I notice the tightness in that, the needing love from other people more than God. And I Breathe that distraction out. I see it, catch it, breathe it out and go, you're with me, God. You're providing everything I need for life and godliness. So you use the distractions to engage with them, pull yourself back and go back to the flow. Like exercise, that whole process of doing that strengthens the pathway. If there's no distractions, then you're not strengthening the pathway in the same way. 
you may have gone so deep that you literally lost in the pathway now. But be encouraged, if you have distractions, that's not a beat yourself up point. That is a chance to bring those things back into submission to what you want to do. Breathe them out and engage with opening the channel even more. And one of the goals that I have that I'd suggest you have is you you open up that, you spend some time doing that until you get to a state of awareness of your expansion, of awareness that you're full of the hesed at this moment. And you want to stay there as long as possible. So you stay at rest, breathing in, breathing out, slowly enjoying the hesed, letting it fill your body, letting it fill your mind, letting it fill your heart. And sit there, rest there, like we could do now. We could just be aware of his hesed expanding through us <laughs> and just enjoy. Because that enjoyment is making it home, making it rest in you. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith. And faith is not some kind of religious magic that you can't understand. It's a mechanism within you where you trust, where you lean, where you let go, where you recognize his overwhelming goodness more than your ability to provide for yourself. I let go. And I, we soak in it now. His hesed love homing itself within us. I'm not trying to calculate how to change myself. I'm sitting in the flow and allowing the flow to change me. I couldn't calculate what it's doing inside me and I couldn't calculate the results of it. So Paul is praying this for the Ephesians. It's almost like his central prayer for them, that they would be impacted by this love and it would sit upon them and so they'll be filled with the fullness. It's, it's an, a thing in itself. It doesn't have to lead to anything else, though of course it will. But he's saying, I want you to be basking. I want you to be exploded with that hesed so that you're feeling it and it's flowing through you and you drink of it and you hold it for as long as possible before you then get on with the rest of your life but that pathway has now strengthened so whenever i'm interacting in life a pathway is there just next to me in a stronger state than it was before and i keep dipping into it and it keeps sending a flow of his love towards me. I feel it. Now, as you do this more, totally unexpected knots might come up in your being. Things that you've held on to that you were unaware of that were uh, a reason why the flow wasn't there. Like memories of things that have happened might come up. Now, this is more even than just a distraction. This is something coming to mind that could be a reason why something happened. For instance, you remember when you didn't get what you dearly wanted uh, as a gift at some point in your childhood and you suddenly remember the pain of that, that it was really important to you however you might have rationalized it as an adult now, it was really important to you. And the bubble of that pain comes up as you're doing this. You might even feel it in your body. You might have a heavy sensation in your arms or on your shoulders or in your heart. And you capture that. Again, don't run away from that bubble that's come up. I capture it. I look at it. Go... And I go into it because if it's come up, 
It's a chance for the Holy Spirit to rewire how I remember that memory and then what I do with it. So I go into it. I feel, I'm reminded of the pain. I access it in my body. I breathe it out and breathe in. He's with me. I breathe it out. I breathe in. He's with me. And I, I do my best to come to a state of rest in that memory. And what is going on, probably in ways that your soul cannot comprehend and your mind cannot calculate, is the kratos and the dunamis, the creative power and the kinetic power of the Holy Spirit are operating in that moment to rewire you on the inside for things to change, for that memory, that bubble to burst in a way. You might find that your memory of that is different if you spend a few moments engaging with it in this way. You might find it comes up several times and you keep doing this and it slowly changes. I don't go, oh, I've processed this before, so I don't process it again. No, if it's come up again, I go in again. Because this is the reformation of your mind, the recreation of your mind, the renewal of your mind, so that you will be a living example of the will of God, of the desire and delight of God flowing through your life. And these things, you don't have to lock yourself away in a room for hours to experience these things. <coughs> it's often good to be on a walk and do this process. There's something about walking and having your eyes open and seeing the scenery go by that gives you a motion, a movement that, that relates to the dynamic of God as you press in and go, I open my heart to your provision. I open my heart to your goodness. I breathe out anxiety. I breathe in. Do you meet my every need? That you've given me everything I need for life and godliness. And I don't think it's an accident that Paul talks about walking in the Spirit. It's often translated living in the Spirit. But in his mind, in the Hebraic mind, to walk is your life, it's your walk. But I think it's even more than that. Walking does something. It moves you forward. The, the, the passing of images in front of your eyes is you aligning, is you setting a state of change, of things moving forward. So meditating like this when you walk can be powerful, not just when you close your eyes and sit in a chair, which sometimes isn't the right state to be in. When you close your eyes, and it's a different state. But opening your eyes and seeing things pass and breathe out, it might even cause you to notice things about what you're seeing in a new way that will affirm that he's providing everything you need for life and godliness as that channel is formed within you. These things... Take work. Repetitive creation of the pathways in your being. The recreation of your mind. Jesus said, ask and seek and knock and you will find the door will be open to you. Things will happen if you persist at asking and seeking and knocking. Now, it's not that God doesn't want to give you these things. He says at the end of this statement in Matthew, he says, and how God wants to give you good things. It's not that he's withholding. It's just that you have to create the pathway by repetitive asking and seeking and knocking to create the channel through which his goodness can flow to create the channel for which the sense of his hesed love can start to live in you. 
And so, Christ, the embodied head of God, forms in you, takes his seat in your being. He loves me. He loves me. And that starts to change you, to bring a security to your life such that even when things go wrong or people reject you, your instinctive response isn't one of rejection back, but a sadness that they would not want the love of God that's flowing through you as an individual to be around them. You become full and outward focused the narcissism, the focus on self falls away because the self is at rest. I'm loved. I'm loved. I'm loved. These are extraordinary truths and I've just given a few practical things that you can do and these are of course um, unique and dependent on on you as to how they work out for you. You need to find your rhythm, your way of cooperating with the formation of these channels within you. But going back to where we started, become sensitive, become aware of when you've sped up or you've gone quiet and you're hiding or, or there's been some change in your state. And recognize that shift in your heart Open yourself up to go, what is it that's in my heart that's stopping the flow of the Hesed right now? Catch it. Work with it. Take it later into your time with God to work with it and form these flows. I hope that's been helpful. I'm having a great time here in the Netherlands and I'm, it's a privilege to be with you wherever you are. And um, I hope we'll speak again, meet again, uh, be communicate again, communicate again soon. I'm enjoying these times of imparting to you. I hope you're finding them beneficial. If you have, please join in in the comments on YouTube. Um, if you're able and understand that technology to comment, to get an interaction going, that will be so good. Uh, but I'll also take a few moments no, now to say, is there, is there any questions? Does anyone want to ask a question? So I'll take a few minutes to read the feed and see what I can say. <coughs> yeah. You're getting, giving me lots of uh, lovely positive feedback. I really appreciate that. And um, if, there's, if there's no more questions, I'm going to draw this time to a close. I don't want to take much more of your evening. And um, yeah, thank you so much. Lord, I want to ask that you strengthen us to develop pathways in cooperation with you in our hearts. So your love has a wide open channel to flow through us and into us. In Jesus' name, amen.